All right, guys, welcome back to the TCI studios. Um, Sam, Davis, Robert, uh, I guess we're not in the studios. We're in the headquarters. I misspoke. Um, it's, a, it's, it's only week three. Yeah. I'll get it down by maybe week 10. Uh, all right, we're going to give you our predictions and our uh, keys to the game. One of you guys had 49 last week. I, I did. You did? Yeah. Okay, so you had what, 49? 49, 49 10, six or 10. 10? Okay. I wasn't too far off. I said 52 had 52, to 52. I had so 62. Just a field goal off. And I think Gavin or somebody, one of our other guys had 49 to 6. So yeah. a couple guys nailed the, the Clemson score. Um, another game this week where we could see a lot of points on the scoreboard on mm. one side and not a whole lot on the, the Yellow Jackets side. But let's uh, talk about this one. Davis, we'll start with you. You know, what's kind of your keys what are you looking to see saturday uh well i think the first thing for clemson i don't i don't know if they necessarily have to win the turnover margin but you need to clean up the turnovers so if there's mm -hmm. been one bugaboo for them on offense that that really sticks mm -hmm. out is the turnovers i mean they, that's been a team that they were top 25 in the country in turnover margin last year average just like one over basically just over one a game turned it over three times other than now i know that was Really, only one by the first teamers. I mean, that, that was with them rotating a lot of guys and, and some stuff by some of the reserves and backups. But you really need to clean that up as you go forward. But I think, with, with just from a bigger picture standpoint, um, not giving up the explosive play to this Georgia Tech offense. Because for people that don't know, this is not the that you know Paul Johnson's flex bone trip. That, the, the days of that are, are yep. gone. Now they've got they've, with Jeff Collins, they've gone no more traditional spread offense. But they have two quarterbacks that. Clemson has to prepare for that are both really mobile. Uh, Dabo talked about that Tuesday during his press conference about, you know, even though they, they the formations and some of the personnel and, and, and things like that are different than what they used to run under Paul Johnson, they still have some spread principles in there with RPOs and getting guys in the perimeter, getting guys in the edge. And I think that's what Georgia Tech might try to do because I don't think Georgia Tech's going to waste a lot of time trying to run between the tackles. Um, so I think, that, I think they're gonna try, probably going to incorporate a lot of RPO stuff, try to get those – Running backs and quarterbacks on the edge, and and you just just play if you're Clemson, play disciplined football on defense. You know eyes and um, keeping your eyes in the backfield, things like that. Just because uh, I, I don't think Georgia Tech's going to be able to sustain long drives against Clemson's defense. But you know if if you if you give up the the, the big pass or the, or the long run, obviously it's you know your your score. They don't have to put those drives together, and and the longer you make teams drive, the Chances, the better the chances are they're going to make a mistake at some point. So I, I think that's really the, the big thing um, f for this game, uh, particularly on, on defense. All right, Sam, I know you got this temp ex Temple coach. You got you, you got his magic game plan. I don't know if I'm allowed to uh, <laughs> say some of the stuff that I would like to say on uh, camera, but um, I think for me, just one of the keys is definitely, it might sound cliche, but just consistency. I, I think. You know, we saw that against South Carolina State. It wasn't exactly there. There's Georgia, but they were able to consistently run the football. Granted, that's the opponent, but I think that's kind of what they want to predicate their offense on. And you saw it was able to get their offense going when they were able to effectively run the ball and it just win the battle in the trenches. That's what – I mean, again, it's cliche, but that's not what they did against Georgia, and that's right. what they were able to do against South Carolina State. And granted, yeah, we know A little the bit opponent. of difference in <laughs> – Exactly. <laughs> Quality. But, but I think just winning in the, in the trenches and consistency is, is, is big for them, especially running the football. And, and I think we saw – what Clemson can do offensively when they get Will Shipley and Kobe Pace involved and even Lynn J. Dixon, we don't know what his role is going to be, but we know that he's an effective ball carrier. We know that he can be a difference maker when he's in there. We saw what Shipley is more than capable of. He clearly had more than, you know, seven yards rushing this time. He was the, uh, he was the offensive player, of the not the offensive player of the week, but the running back. He of the was week. the TCI offensive. Yeah, player he was the TCI. Week. He was. I think the most he was the important rookie. player of the week. Yeah, <laughs> he was the rookie of the week. Right, that's what it was. Um, so he looked great, and I think that's just something that, you know, what do we say after the Georgia game? They had to get back to the basics, and getting back to the basics kind of helped them. Obviously, you need to see DJ look better than he did. I think mm -hmm. there's still a little, little mm -hmm. bit of a shakiness there, a little bit of uncertainty. I mean, he made some necessary throws. He made, made some good throws. He also made some bad throws. So. Getting a little yeah. bit more consistency out of him and seeing kind of the level of production that you that we've come to expect, but haven't necessarily seen so far. Um, so I, I think that'll be big. And, and the defense, I, I think, just kind of continuing to to play other playing consistency. That word we use again. I mean, they haven't allowed a just defense continue to shut out. Yeah, they haven't allowed an <laughs> yeah. offensive touchdown That's yet. And yeah. I, let's hope for their sake that that, that kind of continues. And I think they're going to hang their hat on that this week. Yeah, to the to your point. To adding to – I know there's a lot of hand-wringing among some fans about the way DJ's played and being inconsistent and things, but 
the running game is going to be a key for them mm-hmm. all season long. Particularly, I don't necessarily against Georgia Tech because I just don't think the caliber of opponent's really there. But I mean, as you go through and play some tougher teams in your ACC schedule, you're going to you're, you're going to take pressure off DJ in that offensive line mm-hmm. if you can run the ball. And and they need to be better running the ball. And we've talked about that since before the season. And that's something that they need to do just to help out the passing game and make DJ feel more comfortable. This passing game doesn't feel like it has to carry the load every single week. Well, well, I'm going to yeah. vary a little bit from you guys because I think exactly what you said, that's got to be a staple. Yeah. But I think this week, getting ready to go on the road for the first true road game, um, although the Georgia fans in NC State are probably pretty similar is <laughs> when Clemson goes to NC State, I think they're going to work more this week on the passing game. I think they're going to try to get DJ a little bit of confidence, try to get some, some yeah. of that rhythm going before. You, you don't want the NC State road game to be the game where – He's going in, and he's still kind of in a little bit in a funk, mm-hmm. I guess, yeah. for lack mm-hmm. of a better word. So, I think they'll hope that they can have what they had last week from the running game, but also see if they can get a little bit more positive results out of the, the passing game. Yeah. I think we might see Will Shipley, uh, you know, do something there. I think they'll – you know, Justin Ross, I think he's going to get better each week just because he's mm-hmm. getting more comfortable yeah. coming back. And you've got some of those other younger players. So, I think they'll work on the passing game this week a mm-hmm. little bit. Um, you know, NC State's had a couple of big injuries on their defense. Best linebacker, one of their safeties out for the season, so they're mm-hmm. not going to quite be the same defense we thought they might be. But they've got a good defense, so we'll. I'm interested to see how that goes. You called it last week. You said Clemson's going to run the ball 50 times. They're going to focus on the run, and that's absolutely what they did. I'm so interested you think to that see. They're going to go out for a more balanced. I'm approach. interested to see if they try to get more balance and just try to get a little more confidence yeah. in the passing game before you go on the road. And, and with DJ, too, it's, it's – to your point, it probably might be a lot of – they might just dial up a bunch of simple throws just to help him fundamentally. Mm-hmm. Get, with him right now, it's just making some of the simple throws. Mm-hmm. I mean, you overthrow a wide open Justin Ross in the end zone. Uh, you, you chunk one off your back foot out, out of the end zone. That should have been intercepted. Yep. Uh, Dabo talked about that uh, on Sunday. Uh, so, it's just – like I said, and I've said before, it, I think people forget this is a, a – guy who's only got four starts under his belt. And he probably played a little bit above his head in those two starts he made last year. Mm-hmm. And the expectations were so high. But it's, but he's still a young guy, still going through his first season as a full-time starter with the expectation of taking over uh, for a first-round pick at, for a, at a program like Clemson. So I think just taking some time to get used to, to everything and, you know, get comfortable in the offense and get comfortable with the decision making yep. and, and and his mechanic and mechanics and fundamentals. If you want to parallel out there, Dabo talked a little bit about this too. Took Trevor Lawrence four games before yeah. he took over starter. Trevor Lawrence's breakout game where he showed, hey, I need to be the starter, was against Georgia Tech in Atlanta. So that was kind of a go home game for for Trevor. But that's where the lights went off, mm-hmm. and you could just tell the difference yeah. in the confidence in the player. And we'll see maybe this week with Georgia Tech, that'll be the same thing for DJ. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I think, like, to your point, just get him – use this game and get him a little more confidence. Mm-hmm. But I think the big picture-wise, you, you want to be – you want to try to be as multidimensional as you mm-hmm. can against everybody so that the mm-hmm. passing game does not just – the pressure's not on them so much every single Absolutely. game. Well, and, you know, Tony Elliott said it a lot over the years. He and Jeff Scott both used to do this, which was different than Chad Morris. Chad Morris was a little more stubborn. He was going to run what he was going to run. Mm-hmm. and make it happen. Jeff and Tony have always been about taking what the defense gives them. Yep. So you got to be able to pass some games. You got to be able to run some games. You want to have that balance mm-hmm. and be able to do both. So they need to get that passing game where they get in a game where they yeah. need to rely on that more. They can, can take what the defense gives yeah, them. Yeah. To, to your point though, you, you do want to be as comfortable as possible in both and both yep. running and passing because ultimately at the end of the day, if you're in a close game, you get, you got to go do what you got to do to win. Yep. Yep. And right now it looks like the, the, their strength is passing game. Uh, so uh, that's why I keep saying they, they need to – they got to have to work on the run. But, yeah, I mean, you want to be confident in everything you're doing so that w- regardless of how you need to move the ball, football or, or score points, uh, you can you know, later in the year. All right, now we're going way out on that limb, see if we can get good, good recommendations like you guys had last week. <laughs> go with our predictions. Um, Davis, we'll start with you. I'll go 42-10. Uh, to 42-10. to Okay. I mean, they're not – Clemson's not going to score 42 in the first half? Um, <laughs> I don't teasing. think so. All right. I guess it could. <laughs> yeah. Sam? Um, I'm going to say 55-13 Clemson. Okay. 55-13. Okay, I'm going high again. One of these days I'll be right, maybe. Uh, Georgia Tech's usually been a game where you can go high, although South Carolina State had been too. Um, 
I'm going to go 64 to 7. I think the defense is just – I think maybe they finally give up a touchdown with the, the third team or something. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, or pick six. Or yeah, I, thought they, I thought that was going to happen last week. I guess week. that would be the defense. But, yeah. Um, all right, so we don't expect it to be a – you know, close game, but it's an important game for all these things we've talked about. Last week was an important game because, you know, the team is more confident now mm -hmm. than they were after the Georgia game. Hopefully they'll be a little more confident next week. Especially getting off on the right foot in conference play as well. Yep. And Clemson's own the conference. Uh, they haven't lost a conference team in <laughs> a long time. Yeah. Uh, so let's hope that doesn't, doesn't change. That, that's, here. I mean, it sounds very elementary. That's a good point that Sam makes because I think you lost in all this is the fact that Clemson does have to win out basically. To, oh, yes, they do. To get to, yes, to have a chance to slide, slide no the playoffs. No doubt. So, Ohio State helped them a little bit, yeah. but you got to win out. Yeah. And then you, you hope. You hope. Um, all right, guys. Well, we'll have everything covered for you here. Um, I have folks here at the TCI headquarters for the game. We'll have folks there uh, at the Valley for the game. We'll have folks checking out the tailgating for you. Everything. Uh, hopefully, we gave you a good feel last Saturday for what the environment was like over in Death Valley. And this week, Sam will have some recruiting stuff coming later this week. It's We expect that visit list to pick up a little bit this week uh, for Georgia Tech. But stay tuned to the Clemson Insider. We'll have everything covered for you uh, for the most complete coverage of Clemson football and Clemson recruiting.